Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's just one more time welcome the person next to your right or left. Once again, say Happy New Year. Happy New Year. The Lord will do you good this year. This is your year of rising. Praise the Lord. Okay, let's quickly be seated. Thank you very much, choir. Praise the Lord. Another year has dawned. <laughs> Praise the Lord. We thank God for life. The privilege of life. For a new day, a new year. And for the things that the Lord has outlined for our lives this year. We will not struggle this year in Jesus' name. It's the power of God will work for us. This morning we're going to share from the word of the Lord some things that um, we believe are important. Today is um, the first Sunday of the year 2023. So we're going to try to kind of lay foundation for the things we expect to see in the year 2023. Book of um, Psalm 11.3. Psalm 11.3, the Bible says that if the foundation be removed or be destroyed, it said, what can the righteous do? If the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? So it is expedient, it is important that we lay the right foundation for the year and the years ahead. Foundation is very important. The best thing we can do on a day like today, being the first day in this new year, is to lay a foundation, a solid foundation for our lives in the kingdom of God. This is very important. In the book of um, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 11. 1 Corinthians 3, 11. The Bible says, For no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid. He said, which is Christ Jesus. In the past, when I read this scripture, I used to think that what it says is this, for no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is in Christ Jesus. No, that's not what it's saying. The Bible said that the foundation itself is Jesus Christ. Not that it's in him. The foundation is Jesus Christ. It said, no other foundation can anybody lay apart from the foundation which is Jesus Christ. So that means that in the year 2023 and beyond, anybody that wants to excel spiritually and otherwise must lay the round, right foundation, which is Christ Jesus, according to the scriptures. So we need to lay the right foundation so that we can fulfill the purpose of God for our lives. For those of us that have been following or that follow the early morning prayers we Pastor Ladi led us in up to yesterday morning. Pastor has been talking about some important things. Some key spiritual things. Because many of us who are believers have been so distracted. Many of us have left the substance and we are pursuing shadows. The pastor began to talk to us about the things to keep in view. The things we need to look at on a daily basis. Things like seeking the kingdom of God first. Things like going after the mysteries and the keys of the kingdom of God. Things like looking for a new heaven and a new earth. Talking about the return of the king. These are some of the things that we have ignored in churches. We live our lives as believers as if Jesus is never going to come back again. We live as if it all ends here. But there's an eternity. 
and God will help us in Jesus' name. Third John chapter 1, verse 2. The Bible says what? I wish above all things so that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. I'm talking about the right foundation. In other words, the prosperity, the prosperity, whether it's your health, whether it's the prosperity of your finances, whether it's the prosperity of your career, this prosperity of your marriage, of your family, Bible said it hinges on, it depends on the prosperity of your soul. So if you are going to prosper in your health, in the area of health, in the area of career, in your job, in your home, in your family, your marriage, your finances, Bible is saying pay attention to the prosperity of your soul. If your soul is not prospering, in other words, there is no basis for you to expect prosperity in other areas of your life. So it is important to pay attention to the things that matter. The prosperity you are looking for depends on the prosperity of your soul. There is no other foundation anybody is going to lay than that which has been laid, which is Christ Jesus. All the things that we seek, all the things we are looking for is in him. Praise the Lord. So if we get the foundation right, then we can be sure that what we are looking for, that what God has promised us, pastor has been telling us about the great and precious promises. If you go to the book of Peter, the Bible said, by these promises, it said, we might become partakers of his divine nature. That means we have, we, if we follow the promises, we will become like God. We have his nature. We will act like him. We will think like him. Great and precious promises. God will help us in Jesus' name. Now, the question to ask then is, in all of these things we are saying, what really does God want from us? What does God want for my life in 2023 and the years beyond? I'm a young man. I'm a young lady. I'm in college. What does God want for my life? How can I make a difference in my generation? How can I make a difference in my community? How can I make a difference in my school? How can I make a difference in Antony Village? All of that is one of the things that we are going to be looking at this morning by God's grace. Now, let me start by saying that 99% of the prayers we pray in all the churches is about us. In other words, we have become a bunch of selfish believers. All that we seek is God bless me. God prosper me. God establish me. God make a way for me. It's all about me. It's no longer about God. A lot of people spend years in church and never for one day think about what God wants. We don't seem to realize that God has needs. Yes, he said he will care for us. He said, cast your burden upon me. I care for you. He said, bring your load. I'm going to help you carry it. Yes. But at the same time, we're talking about a covenant here. We ignore the role that God expects us to play and then we expect so much. Thank God for his mercies. So 99% of the prayers that we pray is about us. Let the truth be told. The ones we pray in our closet is about you. My children, my family, my money is about you. At times even when we come to church and we claim that we are serving God, we are serving him for one reason or the other. We are looking for money. Looking for husband. Looking for wife. It's about us. But the years, in the years ahead, it's no longer going to be about you. 
it's going to be about God. What does God want? What does God want for my life? God has needs. And we need to begin to pay attention and to ask the question, God, what do you want to do with my life? God has a need. We cannot afford to remain selfish. We cannot afford to continue to seek only our own. God has a kingdom that is a priority for him. God has a kingdom that he wants to establish. God wants his righteousness to be established. He wants his kingdom expanded. But how many of us are thinking about expanding the kingdom of God? How many of us are concerned about establishing his righteousness in our homes, in our communities, in our schools, in our neighborhoods? How many people really are concerned about what God wants? God is interested in his light shining in Nigeria. How many people are willing to make themselves available for God to use to shine his light in our nation? So God has needs. He wants his kingdom to be expanded. How many people worry about souls? People are perishing around us. We don't care. How many people bought that? The whole of last year, 2022, how many people invited one person to church? How many people have neighbors who don't go to church, who go to native doctors, who are occultists, who bother to go and tell them, look, there's a God in heaven that is interested in your life. There's a God that loves you. There's a God that does not want you to perish. There's a God that wants you to repent. How many people are thinking about these things? And these are things that are important in the heart of God. But every day we go to God in prayer. We ask him, Lord, do this for me. Lord, do that for me. Lord, protect my children. Save them. This one. We, are, we keep asking him. But we never stop to find out what God wants. So I'm saying to us that if we are going to do well this year and the years ahead, we need to change focus. There has to be a paradigm shift. We need to begin to think less of us and more of him. John the Baptist said that I might decrease, but that he may increase. How many people are thinking like that? Because that is the way to the future. How many people are saying, Lord, I make myself available. The Bible says we should surrender. We should offer our bodies as living sacrifices. How many people are saying, Lord, I offer my body as a living sacrifice. Lord, use me. Pastor, I was talking about the, our generation. He said, God has a purpose and God has a plan for eternity. God has a purpose. God has a plan for my generation and your own generation. And then God has a purpose and a plan for your life. How many people stop to wonder, to ask, Lord, what is your purpose for my life? What role am I meant to play in my generation? What is your plan for eternity? How many people are asking these questions? The truth is that we cannot continue to play church. We just can't continue to play church. If things are going to go well, we're going to have peace, have joy, enjoy the fullness of the message and the power and the grace of God. We have to align our thoughts with the thoughts of God. In Isaiah 45, he said, your thoughts are not my thoughts. He said, your ways are not my ways. God has a way of thinking. And why he has made his divine nature available to us is so that we can think like him. So if we are going to succeed in the years ahead, and in this year in particular, we need to begin to think or worry about the things that worry God. What are the things that are in the heart of God? What does God want? Praise the Lord. You know the interesting thing is this. He said, seek first my kingdom and my righteousness. He said, then other things shall be added unto you. But see, we are not protesting. We should be protesting that, Lord, 
You say we should, if, if indeed I'm seeking his kingdom and his righteousness, if some things are not going well, I'm, I should protest. Lord, I, I no agree. You said I should seek your kingdom first and your righteousness. A lot of things have been added. I have been seeking your kingdom. I've been seeking your right, but things are not falling in place. I should be protesting. But you know what? We cannot protest because in our hearts, we know we are not seeking his kingdom. We know that his kingdom is not a priority to us. In our hearts, we know that we are chasing. Ch you see, when you wake up in the morning, what are the things in your heart? Is it that my business, my job, my children, my family? How many of us really think about God and what God needs? So I'm just saying to us this morning that this is the first day of the year 2023. Let's begin to lay the right foundation. Foundation for the prosperity of our souls. Foundation for the work that God has called us for. Everybody here, you have a calling upon your life. There are things that God wants to accomplish through you. But are you ready to make yourself available for these things to come to pass? And that's the question that God is asking us this morning. In the midst of the darkness that has covered Nigeria, is there anybody here who wants to make himself available so that God can use him to shine light in the darkest of places in our nation? Anywhere you are, God can use you. God can use anybody. For some young people who think that, no, let my fathers be serving God. Joseph was a boy. He was maybe perhaps, I don't know, maybe 17 years or thereabout. How old was this Samuel when he was in the house of um, God serving under Eli? These were young men. And God used them mightily. So God can use anybody. God qualifies the people he wants to use. Even if you think you are weak, I cannot do it. God will qualify you and God will use you. What God is asking for, make yourself available. Tell him, God, use my life. Touch me. Help me. How many people are thinking about things like this? That's the basis of what I'm saying this morning. How many people are saying, Lord, here am I. Use me. Use my life. The gift you have given to me, Lord, use it. The talent you gave me, Lord, use it. The money you have given me, use it. Use my hands. Lord, use everything you have given to me for the advancement of your kingdom. There are many kingdoms. There's the kingdom of man. There's the kingdom of darkness. There is the kingdom of God. At times, when you look at the progress that the kingdom of man has made, especially through technology and science, and then you place it side by side with the progress we are making in the kingdom of God, you will only be weak. And then you look at what Satan is doing. With all the diseases, all the challenges he's posing for mankind, you begin to wonder, what are we doing in the kingdom of God? God is wants to use us this year 2023 is our year god wants to use you he wants to use me and he will have mercy on us in jesus name how many people tell themselves this year 2023 i want to increase in the knowledge of god these are things that are important to god last year i was here december last year i was here this year i want to be here I want to increase in the knowledge of God. These things do not happen by chance. We have to be intentional about it. We have to plan it. Praise the Lord. That's why we have been talking about planning, planning, planning. How many people are planning for spiritual growth? Many people wrote their plans. If it's possible to look at it now, every other thing is there apart from plan for spiritual growth. Meanwhile, God is saying to us that the prosperity of our lives, I mean the material things we are looking for, depends on the prosperity of our souls. And then you do a plan. There is no specific plan. There is no measurable plan. There is no aspiration to move from here to here spiritually. 
and then you want a big house you want to buy a car you want to travel all over the world you are writing your plan god is not interested in a plan like that god is first of all interested in the prosperity of your soul so to succeed in god you must plan for the prosperity of your soul it must be a concern to you that lord what is happening to me i want to grow spiritually I want to become more sensitive in the things of the spirit. I want to be able to pray more. I want to be able to study the word more. And most importantly, I want to be used of you, Lord. The darkness we see in our nation will not just go away because we are praying in the church. There's an action that must be taken. Bible says that faith without works is what? We have been praying for many years. Nothing has changed because the people are not acting in line with the prayers. We gather in church, we pray. We pray for Nigeria. Lord, heal our land. Restore Nigeria. And then when we go out there, we collect bribe. So how will God, how will God answer that prayer? When we go out there, we do the exact opposite of what we are praying in church. When we go out there, we behave like the ordinary person on the street. We can no longer differentiate between people who go to church or people who serve God and those who do not. But God is saying that a time will come. He said, I'm going to make a difference between they that serve me and they that serve me not. That time has come. Our thinking, the Bible verses we quote, God wants an alignment. It has to align with our lives, the way we are living. That's the only way change will come. If we continue to pray and come to church, I think we are doing enough. I am telling you, it is not enough. There must be an action to back every prayer we pray. Every word of God we read, there must be an action. The Bible says that the people that are blessed are those that do the word. Not just those who hear. It is important to hear. But you are hearing because you want to do. So if you hear and not do, you have not made any difference. God will not bless you. God wants us to do. He wants us to be doers. So my prayer for us is that in this year, 2023, will not just be hearers will be doers of the law of the word in the mighty name of jesus god will open our eyes to see in the name of jesus and i'm asking ourselves i'm asking us this morning are you prepared to seek his kingdom first is the kingdom of god your priority Somebody says, what does it mean to seek the kingdom of God first? It means to put him first in all that you do. That's basically what it is. When you want to do that that will not please God, you are thinking in your heart that, ah, but how will God see this? When you want to make that decision, you are like, God I don't want to do this because it will not please him. So we have to put him first in all that we do. We have to think about his kingdom first. We must to think about how do we advance this kingdom? How do I help in expanding the kingdom? Because the most important thing to God, whether we like it or not, is his kingdom. That's why when Jesus was Jesus said, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. God wants his kingdom to come. He wants his will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. But then it's you and I that he will use to do it. God is not going to come down here. God is spirit. He's not going to come here, you know, to, to, to do his will. It's you. That's why you, we are his ambassadors. 
Bible says that he has made us reconciliate us. He has called us to reconcile, reconcile men back to him. We have a responsibility as believers. Nigeria will not change because all of us gather in church every Sunday. The people that will change Nigeria are the people who are determined to do the will of God. And we thank God. I mean, the challenge is that all of us here, we don't have a choice. Because for many years, Pastor Ladi has been telling us about the kingdom of God. So you cannot say you don't know. Maybe some places they are not talking about it. But in living waters, to the best of my knowledge, we have been talking about this kingdom for years. The kingdom of God. The kingdom of God. Why? Everything Jesus came to do was about the kingdom. Read it. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John is about the kingdom. If you look at the lives of the apostles, it was about the kingdom. It's not about all these things people are talking about today. Right now, if you go to the internet, go to YouTube, go to all those, you will see prophecies. So many prophecies, prophecies that you will bow. They keep prophesying. 2023 will do this. This one will happen. That one will happen. Personally, I don't know about those prophecies. I don't pay attention to them. Why? The Bible says that the testimony of Jesus Christ is what? The spirit of prophecy. You are a prophet too. Praise the Lord. All you need to do is to take on the testimony of Jesus Christ. The Bible says that's the spirit of prophecy. So all this one that somebody will come and say ah, that one rich man will die this year. It's rubbish. It's not, it's not a testimony. So it's like, ah, this year election, people will die. In which election in Nigeria has people not died? That is no testimony. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. We need to pay heed to the word of God. It's only the word of God. The Bible said that he has exalted the word above his name. The word of God supersedes every other thing. The Bible says that in the beginning was the word. The word was with God. It said the word was God. It's through the word that all things were created. So the word of God is the final authority. So anything anybody is saying anywhere that cannot be backed by the word of God is a lie. It doesn't matter who said it. If you like, be a bishop, be a pope, be a G.O. If what you are saying whether it's a prophecy or whatever, if it does not align with the word of God, it's a lie. So all of us need to face the truth. And the truth is the word of God. There's a place where, where they took Jesus and then, you know, Jesus was talking about the truth. One of them asked and said, what is the truth? <laughs> Praise the Lord. The truth is the word of God. So, if we are going to succeed this year, we need to pay attention to the word of God. We need to lay the found, right foundation. And the Bible says that that foundation is Christ. We need to lay the right foundation. And this is the best time to do that. The year, it just, just started. We still have a whole 365 days ahead of us to make a change. If we don't do nothing today and we are waiting that we still have the year, you will be shocked. Before you know it, you will hit March. And then you hit June. And then you'll be wondering what happened to the months. So what am I saying to us? This is the right time to plan. Start with your spiritual plan. Go to God. Find out, Lord, how do I increase spiritually in this year 2023 Holy Spirit help me I want to change my approach to studying the word of God I want to take the word of God more seriously 
I want to pray more. Many people, at times when I come here on, um, on Thursdays, I just see a few people. Yes, there may be a few people who for some, serious, for, for some um, good reason cannot come. I'm not making excuses for anybody. It's your business, really. But the truth is that God wants you to pay attention to the things that matter. The Bible calls them weightier matters. God wants us to pay attention to weightier matters. If you do not plan to attend midweek services, you cannot attend it. And I'm not cursing you. If you don't plan for it, you won't be able to make it. There are many things trying to distract you. The Bible said that there are many voices in the wind. He said, and none of them is without significance. Every day you wake up, whether you are at work, wherever you are in school, anywhere, there are voices speaking to you. But of course, you decide the one you want to listen to. There are many distractions left, right, and center. So if you don't plan that, Lord, this year, 2023, I'm going to change some things in my life. I am going to make sure that I attend service on Thursdays. I attend service midweek. Coming to church once a week is not good enough. The Bible tells, see, if you follow Jesus, three and a half years, Jesus was with the disciples every day, teaching them, guiding them, speaking over them. Are you not surprised that at the end of the time, Jesus, when Jesus ascended, many of them still backslid. After three and a half years, of teaching them daily. Spiritual things are very slippery. Jesus left and Peter went back to fishing. After all the things they saw him do, after all the demonstration of power, they still went back to their old um, trade. So Jesus had to come back again in Acts chapter 1. And for 40 days, the Bible said that he began to teach them about the things that pertain to the kingdom of God. So Jesus was like, there are some things these people have not understood. And he came back and began to teach them. And this was somebody that was three and a half, go and check three and a half years every day. And then stretch it for yourself who come to church once a, day, once a week. It means that you may need like 70 years of teaching. For, for, you to, for you to move from being a Simon to becoming a Peter. Because like I always say in Living Waters, the whole essence of this is to take a Simon and turn him into a Peter. If we come to church for 50 years and God never changes you or turns you from a, a Simon to a Peter, you have wasted your time. Because the word of God is meant to change lives. There is no record of anybody who listened to the word of God and did what he heard and his life did not change. Where is the person? It's impossible for you to listen to God's word and do it and your life will not change. It's impossible. So I'm just saying to us that this is a new year. We need to look at our strategies again. We need to look at what kept us where we ended up in 2022 and make a decision that no I'm going to go beyond this point and I'm saying to, I'm just giving a simple example many of us come to church once a week to make matters worse some only open the bible on Sunday when they come to church and to make things worse some people don't even come to church even on that Sunday with their, with their bible some people come with their phone and stay at the back pinging and sending messages. And then you want, you want to do well. It's not magic, Yoga. It's not magic. Three and a half years every day. And Jesus still had to come back for 40 days. 
And then somebody now comes once a week. And that once, he doesn't come with Bible. There's no seriousness. He stays at the back doing selfie. Ah, this new tent is mine, no? And that's the only achievement for coming to church. No open the Bible. Nothing. And then you want to do well. And you want to prosper. And you want God to establish you. I don't know how many fathers are in the house that will be happy with a child that is disobedient. I mean, you have a son or daughter. And everything that son or daughter does are the things you hate. Is there any father in the house that will be pleased with that kind of child? Because if there is, we need to pray for you. No father. God is a father. And the Bible says, Revelation 4.11, it says he created us for his pleasure. But all we do is to please ourselves, not the one who created us. And we want him to be pleased. He can't be pleased with us. Yes, we can have testimonies. God is full of mercy. The fact that God gives you testimonies, even in all, with, all that, with, your, with all your disobedience, does not mean that he doesn't know what he's doing. He's just a merciful God. You are the one that will pay the price if you take his mercy for granted. To grow spiritually, we must be intentional. We must have a plan. We have Sunday school in church. Many people don't attend. There are people in church. Their house is not far from church, but they, they come last to church. And they want God to, to bless them. God cannot be pleased with things like that. If service starts at 9, you come in by quarter past 10. Some people, after service, after the preaching has even taken, they will just stroll into the church. And when they're even coming, you will see the arrogance. Insulting God. Praise the Lord. I'm not, I'm not condemning anybody. I'm just saying he created us for his own pleasure, not for our own pleasure. Our lives are meant to please him. Yes, we are human. We have our weaknesses. But he also said that if you submit to me, he said, I will perfect my strength in your weakness. So he knows we are weak. But the question is, are you willing to surrender to him? Because if you do, he said, I will perfect my own strength in your weakness. That thing which you think is impossible, I will make it possible. Why? Because you are depending on me. You are trusting in me. You are leaning on me. You are not depending on your certificate or, your, or the bank account, your bank account and stuff like that. No, no, no. You are depending on him. He said, let him who wants to glory. Don't glory. He said, don't glory in your strength. Don't glory in your riches. He said, but glory because you know me. That I am the almighty God. The God of possibilities. That there's no situation he, I cannot change. How many people are prepared to submit their hearts to God and say, Lord, I want to activate the mind of Christ. I want to think like you. God wants us to think like him. Not just to think, to think like him. You see, if you don't think like God, these things I'm saying this morning, you will think is one big thing to do. But with God, it's cheap. You say, ah, how do I wake up by 5 a.m. and start coming to church? It's possible if you think like God. Praise the Lord. Say, ah, pastor said I should come for midweek service. How can I do it? If you plan towards it and you bring it before God, he will make it possible. If you don't think like him, you cannot please him. So he wants you to activate the mind of Christ. He wants you to increase in the knowledge of him. So like I said, I'm just saying to us, it's a new year. A new year 
is a new beginning. Forget about 2022. It's gone. There is nothing you can do about 2022 anymore. <laughs> There's nothing. So sitting down and say, ah, if I had done it this way last year, forget it. You're wasting your time. 2022 has gone forever. The best you can do now is to do what the Bible, you know, the Bible says we should redeem the time. That means we can, God can help us recover the time. But if you sit back and you're like, oh, if I had done it this way, you are wasting your time. That year is gone. And there will, be no, there will never be another 2022. So it's better to look forward. Apostle Paul said, I, he said, I don't look backwards. I'm, I'm going forward. Let the things that happened last year go with last year. This is a new year. A new year is a new beginning. The Bible says that his mercies there are new every morning. That means they are new even every week, every month, every year. There are mercies for every year. So it's better for us to key into what God has for us in 2023 instead of crying over 2022. There's something big, something glorious, something powerful that's going to happen if only we can pay attention to what God is saying. Praise the Lord. I am confident of what I'm saying. The word of God never fails. There is no record of anybody who trusted in God and God put him to shame. There is no such record. If you know one, show me. Praise the Lord. Let me close. I want us to look at a story in the Bible and I will close with it. It's in the book of, um, I think, 1 Corinthians. Is it Corinthians? Okay, let's look at 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse 1. Second Samuel 7, 1. Now it came to pass, when the king was dwelling in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies all round, go on, that the king said to Nathan, the prophet, See now, I dwell in a house of cedar, but the ark of God dwells inside tent. Tent curtains. Go on. Then Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that is in your heart, for the Lord is with you. Verse 4. But it happened that night that the word of the Lord came to Nathan, saying, Verse 5. Go and tell my servant David, This says the Lord, Would you build a house for me? To dwell in. Go on. For I have not dwelt in a house. Since the time. That I brought the children of Israel. Up from Egypt. Even to this day. They have moved about. In a tent. And in a tabernacle. Yes. Wherever I have moved. Ab wherever I have moved. About with all the children of, or children of Israel. Have I ever spoken a word to anyone from the tribes of Israel whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Go on. Now therefore, thus shall you say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the sheepfold, from following the sheep to be ruler over my people over Israel. Verse 9. And I have been with you wherever you have gone and have cut off all your enemies from before you and have made you a great name like the name of the great men who are on the earth. Go to verse 11. Go to 11. Since the time that I commanded judges to be over my people Israel. I have caused you to rest from all your enemies. Also, the Lord tells you, this is where I find very interesting. He said, also, the Lord tells you that he will make you a house. Go on to 12. Verse 
when your days are fulfilled and you rest with your fathers, I will set up your seed after you who will come from your body and I will establish his kingdom. Praise the Lord. First Chronicles 28 verse 2. I just read a few verses and I will say what I want to say and then we can go. Then King David rose to his feet and said, Hear me, my brethren and my people. I had it in my heart to build a house of rest for the ark of the covenant of the Lord and for the footstool of our God and had made preparations to build it. Gone. But God said to me, you shall not build a house for my name because you have been a man of war and have shed blood. Praise the Lord. If you go to First Chronicles 22, go to 22. I don't want to, you can read all of that later. I just want to point out a few things and then we'll close. Then David said, this is the house of the Lord God. And this is the altar of burnt offering for Israel. Now, where am I going to? David said to himself, he spoke it out in the presence of prophet Nathan, that I want to build a house. I cannot live in this mansion. And then God is living in tent. Of course, you know that in our dispensation, God is not interested in as good as this, we are trying to make this place be. This is not the church. The church is you and I. Today we are the temple of God. So what matters is not this. Even though it's important you know, for us to have a good place of worship. But we are the temple of God. But in those days it mattered in, the, in their time. So he said, I want to, I can't live in this good house. And then the Lord is intent. Nathan was excited. Ah, thank God somebody is thinking like this. But when he got back to his house, God spoke to him and said, look, my friend, go back. Go and tell him, oh, he's not going to build a house. His hands are stained with blood. But if you read all of those stories together, he said, your son would do it. But what is important for me is the fact that God did not stop there. God now said, because you even thought about it, and if you read all of those scriptures, you see that David prepared all the things that Solomon needed to build the temple. David provided it. God said, but you will not build it. Your son will do it. But everything that was needed, he made a plan for it. He prepared for it. Yet God said, you will not build it. Your son will do it. But because you even thought about it, because you even thought about it. He doesn't say, look, I'm going to bless you. Your son will sit on my throne forever. God began to bless him. I'm just saying to us that you see, the things that we think about when it comes to the kingdom of God does matter. In this year, 2023 and beyond, it is important for all of us to begin to ask God, Lord, what will you have me do for your kingdom? What do you want me to do in your kingdom? What role have you cut out for me in your kingdom? How can I be a blessing in your kingdom? He says, seek first his kingdom. So he thought about it and God was excited. And God said, you will not build it all, but thank God you thought about it. And because you did, this and this and this is going to happen. And of course, you know what happened. Everything as God said it. Jesus Christ, of course, you know, is of the tribe of... Came from the lineage of David. Praise the Lord. Are you following what I'm saying? So today, Jesus is sitting on the throne. But he, David thought about it. So all I'm saying to us is let's leave this path we have been following. This path of coming to church because of what God will do for me. There's nothing wrong with that. As a matter of fact, whether you think about it or not, whether you pray about it or not, 
If you please him, he will do it. You don't really need to stress yourself about it. If you go after the things that are important to God and you are able to do them, I am telling you, those things you have not prayed for, God will do it for you. What does he knows everything now? That's why he said the best of the air, they don't sow, they don't plant, God takes care of them. It can't be you that he created in his image and likeness. So let's have a shift. Let there be a shift. Let's turn away from this practice of everything that I'm coming to church. God will bless me. It's good. He will bless you. But let's worry about what, the, what are the things important. What are his own needs? What are the things important to God? Can we determine, for example, in our hearts, that, Lord, I'm going to change my ways. This year, I must begin to bring people to your kingdom. I must begin to counsel people. I'm going to be a deliverer to people around me. Those that do not know you, they will know you because of me. Those who are afraid, they will cease to be afraid because I am there. This year, Lord, because of your kingdom, my light will shine. That's the mindset to approach this year. And I assure you, God will never forget your labor of love. Every desire of your heart that is in line with his will, he will grant it. He said, if you ask anything according to my will, not just if you ask anything, that thing you are asking for, he said, if it's according to my will, he said he will do it. So most of the things we have been asking for and we are saying God does not answer prayers. It is not in line with his will. It's not what God wants to do. You are trying to use Wayo to force him. Unfortunately, you can't force him. He is God. He's sovereign. He rules the earth. He owns everything. The entire world, you see, belongs to him. You know, some people who work in some offices, they try to and to use Wayo to be trying to get their organ to do what they want. You can't do that with God. Some people get promotion because they go and do all sorts of things with their MD. You can't do that with God. Because he sees our hearts. He knows our motives, even for the things that we think he doesn't know about. He knows everything. So I'm just saying to us, let us have a rethink. Let's make a detour. Let's admit before God, Lord, in the past I missed it. But now, Lord, I have made up my mind. I am determined to do your will. I am ready for the advancement of your kingdom. Let's just rise up on our feet. We are just going to say a few prayers. You know, the Bible said that darkness will cover the earth and gross darkness the people. But God now said, but you will arise. He said, and you will shine. He said, his glory will be upon you. I want you to lift up your voice and begin to talk to God. This year, 2023, starting from now, Lord, I present myself before you. Let my light shine. Make me a light in the midst of darkness. Let my light shine, Lord. Come on, cry out to him. Let my light shine. It's not about your weaknesses. It's not about what you have done or what you have not done. He wants to use your life. He has a plan. He has a purpose for your life. There's a role that you are caught out to play in your generation. Talk to him. Lord, let my light shine. Let my light shine. Everywhere I go, everywhere I am, whether it's at work, whether it's at home, whether it's in my neighborhood, whether it's in school, Father, let my light shine. Make me a shining light. 
You said that I am the light of the world. You said the path of the just is like a shining light that shines brighter and brighter unto the perfect day. Father, let my light shine. Call upon him. Let my light shine, Lord. Let my light shine. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let's begin to ask him for revelation. In Isaiah 11 2, Isaiah prophesied concerning Jesus. He said he will not judge by the seeing of his eyes, nor by the hearing of his ears. I want us to talk to God. I don't want, this is 2020, I don't want to judge by the seeing of my eyes, nor by the hearing of my ears. I want to walk in revelation knowledge. Pastor has been talking to us about prophetic planning. Grant me the revelation of prophetic planning. Help me to understand it. Help me to build my life around it. Lord, open my eyes to see. This year, I need understanding. I don't want to grope in the dark. Come on, talk to him. Holy Spirit, help me. You are the only one that can help me. On my own, I can do nothing. By my strength, I cannot prevail. This year, Lord, help me. My eyes are on you. Show me the path of life. In Isaiah 30, 21, he said, And you will hear his voice. And the voice will be saying to you, My son, my daughter, this is the path for you to follow. Come on, talk to him. Help me this year, Lord, to hear your voice. When I get to the crossroad, help me to hear your voice. When I'm facing challenges, help me to hear your voice. Help me, Lord. Come on, call upon him. Help me to hear your voice, Lord. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. We are still praying. Let's ask him to help us by his spirit. To prioritize his kingdom. He says, seek first my kingdom. Many of us seek every other thing apart from his kingdom. But our change has come. This year, we will seek his kingdom first. Ask him by his spirit to help you. To prioritize his kingdom. In your daily life. In the choices that you make. Lord, help me. Help me, Lord. Come on, talk to him. Thank you, Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Pastor spoke to us about the mystery of time. And he told us that our time is our life. And like I said to us before, today is the first of... Um, January 2023. See, after today, there will never be another 1st of January 2023. So it does matter what we do which each day that God gives us. That's why in Psalm 90 verse 12, the Bible says, Lord, teach me to number my days. Why? It says so that I can apply my heart to wisdom. Call upon him this morning. Lord, teach me to number my days. Every day of this year, 2023 will be productive. Help me to be productive every day of this year. Let the choices I make, my decisions, let, it be, let them be impactful. Give me the wisdom, the direction to know what to do. So that my life will impact your kingdom. Tell him, Lord, I'm tired of being ordinary. 
As far as God is concerned, you are not ordinary. You carry his divine nature. You are not a stranger. You are not a foreigner. He said you are a member of the household of God. You are a fellow citizen with the saints. That's how important you are to him. Come on, talk to him. Help me, Lord. Let every day of my life in this year count. Make me productive in all my endeavors. Help me, Lord. When I speak, cause me to speak life. Talk to him. Father, we say thank you. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' name. In Ephesians chapter 5 verse 15, the Bible said, talks about redeeming the time. So we should redeem the time. You know why he said? Because the days are evil. Ephesians 5 said, See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. 16. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. You see, there are days we wasted in the past. This year we will recover those days. The Lord will help us. We will recover every day we lost last year. Every step we ought to have taken that we did not take. God is a God of second chance. I tell you, this year we will recover every lost time. In the mighty name of Jesus. Call upon him, Lord, help me to redeem my time. Help me to redeem my time. Help me to redeem my time. Help me, Lord, to redeem my time. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Father, we thank you this morning. Lord, we worship you. We give you praise. We exalt your name. We thank you for ushering us into this new year, 2023. Thank you because we did not lose anyone you gave to us. Thank you because, because of your mercy, you permitted us to see a new year. Not just see a new year in good health, in good spirit, with sound minds. Father, we are grateful. We worship you, Lord. We give you all the glory. In the name of Jesus. Father, we present your people before you. Lord, we cannot make it without you. Except you help us, Lord, we can't be helped. We commit everyone here into your hands. The Bible says that whatsoever is committed to you, it's safe. You are able to keep us. Father, we pray that in this year, 2023, Father, you will keep us. Lord, you will sustain us. You will indeed be our Father, our source, in the name of Jesus. You will give us strength in the inner man. Yes, there will be challenges, but you will make a way for us in the mighty name of Jesus. In this year, Father, you will lift us up. You will plant our feet on higher ground in the name of Jesus. You will open our eyes of understanding. You will help us to seek you first. To seek your righteousness first. To put you first in all that we do. In the name of Jesus. In every area where we are weak, we pray that you will perfect your strength in us. In the name of Jesus. That none of us will be weary in well doing. In the name of Jesus. Every heart of stone, Father, you will remove from us. You will give us hearts of flesh. Hearts that will be receptive to your word. Hearts that will surrender to you. Hearts that will obey you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, our light will shine. Our light will shine. Our light will shine. Your marvelous light will shine upon us. In the name of Jesus. This shall be a year of great testimonies. Testimonies of how God used you to advance his kingdom. How God used you to bring somebody to his kingdom. 
how God used you to impact your neighborhood. That shall be your testimony this year. You will not lack wisdom. You will not lack understanding. In the mighty name of Jesus. Revelation knowledge shall be your portion. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We worship you. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. If you are prepared, you are equipped, you know you are ready for this year. Can you shout a big hallelujah to him? I'm not sure I heard it. I said a big hallelujah. That doesn't sound big to me. Shout a big, big, big hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Let's be seated. Once again, I welcome us to the year 2023. I don't know about you. I'm excited about this year. I don't know. It's not because there's anything physical I'm looking at. But I know that God is able. The one who has called us will never leave us nor forsake us. So put behind all the challenges and let's face the future. I tell you, your future is great. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise the Lord. So we will bring you more instructions as to what we're going to be doing in the course of January and of course in the course of the year. So as we get them, we'll pass it across to us. But one thing I can assure you is that everything is pointing to a glorious 2023. You will not miss your portion. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. So for our youth, I have great news for our youth. Put your hands together now. Uh -uh. I have great news for you. In this year, 2023, don't be surprised if you hear a call that you are coming to take Bible study. Put your hands together now. They won't clap. Or they'll stop clapping. You will just get a call and I'll make sure the call comes on Tuesday night. You are taking Bible study on Thursday. Praise the Lord. So when you get that call, don't bother to tell me anything. Just receive it with joy. Hmm? And then you prepare and come. We will all share together. Iron, they say, sharpens what? Iron. If one is weak, the person that is strong will do what? So nothing to worry about. We are going to grow together. We're going to focus on the word of God. Everybody must study the word. Because that's the way forward, really. I wish there's an alternative. There's no alternative. The only solution, all the solutions we seek, is they are in the word. So all of us are going to go take that journey together. And by the end of this year, I can even see it already. Eh? Many of us will become spiritual giants. In Jesus' name. Because some of us are now, like me now, I'm already on my way out. Praise the Lord. I'm on my way out. You guys have to take over. You know, there are other things I can do. So I can also worry about doing other things. So some people here, you know. You know, Papa said, Papa Pastor said there are generations. In fact, he said there are three generations in living waters. Uh -huh. So three generations. So I don't know where I belong, whether it's the first or second. But I know I'm not in the third. Praise the Lord. So everybody will need to go to God and find out which generation he belongs to or she belongs to and make up your mind as to how you want to play in that generation. The Bible said David served his own generation according to the will of the Lord. You too will serve your own generation according to the word of the Lord. God bless you.